passed by Congress on January 31, 1865, and ratified on December 6, 1865, the 13th Amendment ended slavery. America abolished slavery 150 years ago with ratification of the 13th Amendment. The story draws an upward trajectory of racial equality in America from the abolition of slavery to Brown v. Board of Education to the Civil Rights Act to the election of President Obama. The problem is the story isn't true. We never actually abolished slavery. The 13th Amendment states, Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Except as a punishment for crime, this phrase gets ignored in America's telling of its slavery story. The Thirteenth Amendment did not abolish slavery but rather moved it from the plantation to the prison. In 2015, the two million, largely black, people incarcerated in America are legally considered slaves under the Constitution. As a result, they can and are forced to work for pennies an hour with the profits going to counties, states, and private corporations including Target, Revlon and Whole Foods. In fact, there are more black people enslaved today than in 1,800. This is no accident. In the new Jim Crow, Michelle Alexander lays out how a system of Jim Crow replaced slavery and later how a system of mass incarceration rose to replace Jim Crow. During Reconstruction, Southern states quickly took advantage of the 13th Amendment's slavery loophole by arresting black people for minor crimes such as unemployment, loitering or gambling, and selling them to private employers through the convict lease system. Today, the majority of black people enslaved in prisons were arrested for drug crimes. Even though black people use drugs at the same rate as white people, they are incarcerated for drug crimes at 20 to 50 times the rate of white people in some states. This is not to say that we have not made progress since 1865. Through acts of courage and solidarity, African Americans have fought back against white supremacy for the past 150 years. Incarcerated people have not been hapless victims but rather have organized and actively resisted for decades. It is critical that immigrants have joined in resistance to the prison industrial complex. Detention of immigrants facing deportation in jails and private prisons and immigrants prosecuted for attempting to enter the United States are the fastest growing segment of the prison system. Every year, over 400,000 immigrants are detained in an immigration detention system where many work long days sometimes being paid nothing or if they are lucky, 12 cents per hour. Other immigrants work for basic necessities like food, blankets, or a few minutes of extra sunlight. This is true even though the 13th Amendment does not permit slavery for people being held for immigration violations, which are considered civil not criminal offenses. In two states, immigrants have sued demanding fair pay and safe working conditions. Although the prison industrial complex was seemingly designed for the wholesale incarceration of black communities, Asian Pacific Islanders and other non-black people of color are trapped in the same system. Southeast Asians, Pacific Islanders, and Latinos S are all incarcerated at disproportionate rates. However, we cannot achieve liberation until we address anti-black racism in our own communities and build connections between our struggles, those of African Americans, and slavery. There can be no doubt that the Jews of Europe suffered great hardship and genocide under the regime of Adolf Hitler and his allies during World War II. Nazi concentration camp survivors were able to settle throughout the world and eventually founded the nation of Israel. But the Holocaust survivors in this country are still suffering with an estimated 150,000 age 65 plus living below the poverty line. In response, the Obama administration last week approved $12 million in aid over the next five years to assist these survivors. This was part of an initiative backed by Vice President Joe Biden in 2013. Last year, the White House named Aviva Sufyan as a special envoy for U.S. Holocaust survivor services. Many European countries have paid victims of the Holocaust, at the top of the list is Germany, which paid over $90 billion in reparations. In 2012, Germany gave an estimated 80,000 survivors in other countries a one-time payment of $3,250.
This is not the first time America has paid restitution or reparations to the survivors of racial atrocities. In 1998, the United States pledged to pay $1.25 billion to Japanese Americans and their heirs. That amount is in addition to the $1.65 billion previously paid out to 81,278 claimants. But when it comes to the United States paying reparations to blacks who suffered oppression and genocide, there is no money forthcoming. Taking aside the argument that descendants of former slaves of the United States are more than deserving of economic justice, what about the 20th century black holocaust? There are, in fact, incidents where many of the survivors are still living. The bombing and burning of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma 1921. The burning and lynching of Rosewood, FL 1923. Moore's Ford Bridge Massacre 1947. Church burnings that took place from 1954 to 2015. Illegal and unconstitutional arrests of blacks during the civil rights movement. Jim Crow laws enacted at the state and local levels and ignored at the federal level. The implications of the CIA-linked crack epidemic in black communities. Hurricane Katrina victims living below the poverty line. The sad part about these tragedies is that this is just a short list of events that are deserving of restitution. What does it take for restitution or reparations for blacks in the United States? It's all in the name of Confederacy. It is time to truly abolish slavery in America.